take in a second. We can sing songs. Okay, here we go. All right, the recording and transcript have started. Welcome. It is Thursday, March 24th. You are here at MS Office Hours. My name is Heather Cox. With me today are three amazing and talented lovely ladies, starting with... Hey, everybody. I'm Stephanie Stevens. I'm Victoria Dean. I'm Andrea Sangrio. We are very excited about today's topic. We have one of our wonderful education team members, Brianna Morris, to uh, talk to us today about Omnichannel. And like Victoria said, people might have a lot of questions. I myself am also one of them. So I am very excited to see this presentation so I can increase uh, my depth of knowledge on the topic. So Brianna, we're going to turn our cameras and our microphone off and the show and the floor is all yours. Thank you. This will be a, a tough act to follow, but I'll do my best here. So very nice to meet you all virtually. My name is Brianna Morris and I'm a technical specialist within the education group working specifically with Dynamics 365 as well as our Power Platform, which is our low code, no code platform for building out enterprise applications. So today I'm going to do my best to demonstrate, speak to all of the capabilities that we have within Microsoft's for Omnichannel customer service. So our agenda today is to kind of give you an overview of Dynamics 365 and the Power Platform, just to put that little nugget of knowledge away, but then we're gonna focus primarily on uh, omni-channel experience, um, how we can tailor our prospective student experiences using a multi-channel um, faceted engagement, as well as then understanding what that business value is from leveraging the solution. We'll go into a live demonstration and then we'll end with Q&A. So when we start to think about Dynamics 365 and Power Platform, we have what we consider our first party applications such as sales, marketing, um, customer service, field service, and those are solutions that you can buy for um, prepackaged solutions that you can essentially buy for those specific purposes. But then we also have what we refer to as our Power Platform, which is our low code, no code um, platform for building out those enterprise applications. So when we think about leveraging our first party applications and in conjunction with our Microsoft Power Platform, you have the ability to then fill any gaps within your solution architecture by leveraging Power Platform to build out some more niche applications based on your specific business needs. So within the platform, we have a number of different features under that umbrella, such as Power BI, which is where you can visualize your data after you've ingested it into the system. Uh, Power Automate, which is where we start to think about how we can make our processes the most efficient by automating some manual tasks, such as approvals, um, maybe assessments, gradings, things like that. And then our Power Apps is where we build out our applications. So when we get to the live demo, I'll speak to the different ways that we can surface uh, data within our Power application as well as within Dynamics 365. But when we start to think about how we visualize that data and extend that data to our constituents, you have a number of different experiences that you can leverage, whether that's a portal experience, which we'll see, um, a model-driven application experience, which is like more for administrators, or Canvas application, which is our uh, kind of our mobile driven UI, which is very clean and sleek. So today we're primarily going to focus on our portal experience as well as our um, Dynamics 365 backend administrator experience. And then we also have what we refer to as Power Virtual Agents. So that's our intelligent agent framework that you can leverage to build out bots to answer very simple questions, um, potentially retrieve or execute actions. Um, and that's a way to kind of mitigate the number of questions or um, the, the amount of traffic that you might receive as an institution. You know, all of those generic questions that could be very easily answered. You can then add a bot to your portal or to your website to kind of help your constituents and help your students self-serve. So I'm going to try and touch on as many things as I can today just to give you all a flavor, a taste test of what the omni-channel experience can look like when you leverage different facets of the, uh, of the platform. So why Dynamics 365 for customer service? Why would someone want to leverage a solution to uh, facilitate their customer service process? So we're able to tailor perspective engagements um, based on you know, connecting with the customers on where they've 
most likely want to be connected with, like whether that's text, phone call, uh, Facebook, WhatsApp, you're really able to deliver more empathetic and connected experiences that can really adapt to the evolving needs of the customers, in this case, our students across every channel. And then when you start to think about how we can elevate our counselors or our agents who might be responding to students or engaging with students, we want to be able to empower those employees across your service organization to really solve problems faster with actionable insights, enriched data, and taking all of the data that we might be ingesting and using that in a more proactive way um, and potentially executing some trainings based on the things that we're ingesting, as well as then giving them the tools that they need to be able to self-serve as well as serve the student body or serve your partners or whoever you might be engaging with. And then finally, you're able to optimize your service operations and really drive more proactive service um, with Internet of Things, unlocking more revenue streams. So how can we add time back to your day, um, whether that's leveraging a bot or whether that's leveraging a single pane of glass to manage all of your case workload? Um, we really want to try and add that value and add that time back to your day so you can focus on other tasks um, and focus your attention elsewhere. So when we start to think about how we can customize and tailor our perspective to student experiences, using a CRM, any CRM worth their salt will be able to give you that 360 degree view of the student. So we wanna be able to anticipate that student's needs at a glance and then use a historical view of a conversation summary or timeline to support your further interactions. So having that view of all of the interactions, all of the conversations, the text, um, the voice calls that have transpired in a single repository will help you better um, you know, improve that customer experience, improve that student experience. So bringing all of that data together um, will truly allow you to scale. And then leveraging some AI features, you'll be able to do better identity management and you'll be able to connect with those students and empathize with those students on their terms. So leading into an omni-channel experience really gives you the ability and flexibility to meet those students where they want to connect with you. So that involves, you know, SMS again, either a chat bot experience, potentially Facebook mes Messenger, Twitter, DM, WhatsApp, all of those different means and channels of communication would then live in a single repository and the experience for the counselors, the experience for the agents would be the same, whether regardless of the channel that the person is reaching out on. So we really want to be able to give someone that central hub so that they can work from within a single system and then address all the needs of their constituents. And then finally, we want to think about and we want to start thinking about how we can automate more student centric experiences and processes. So essentially triggering workflows, automating work orders, um, anything in relation to how we can manage manual tasks and make those more efficient, we can start to think about how we can leverage Power Automate in the platform to potentially send out email messages or send out text messages to students based on um, their interactions with our agents or with our counselors. And we really want to start thinking about how we can proactively resolve issues before they occur. And then when we start to think about our internal resources, how we can elevate our agent effectiveness, we really want to be able to accelerate issue resolution. So I think one of the biggest pet peeves of mine is hopping on the phone and having to wait 30, 40 minutes to speak to a person and then the phone dropping, um, you know, it's, it's a really time consuming process and elongates the resolution process. We wanna leverage a unified routing um, capability to really ensure that the incoming work items are assigned to the best student best suited agent or best suited queue, um, we can leverage functionality within the platform to do so. So as soon as an item is created, it goes to the correct resource or the correct resource is called so that they can then answer those questions, get that issue resolved, and then minimize um, you know, the time to resolution that we typically see when you call into a call center. And of course, we want to be able to strengthen cross team collaboration so we can leverage Microsoft Teams to remove some inhibitors and share information more readily, as well as connect with other resources within our organization, all from within that experience to get the help that you might need if you need to uh, contact a subject matter expert or engage with someone else who might have more information than you do at the time. 
And then of course, what do we do with all this information that we're ingesting from a call center perspective, from the bot analytics that we're ingesting? Um, we really want to gain insights into the intent and help our managers, help the, the administrators of the organization identify potential knowledge article gaps by understanding what topics are being most frequently searched. And then again, taking that more proactive stance about helping our constituents, helping our agents to resolve uh, any issues that might occur. Finally, we really want to optimize our service operations, accelerate uh, action with more valuable insights, adapt on real time student interactions, and then provide the right tools to our, our agents and our managers. So again, taking all of the information that we have in the system after a period of time, we are able to leverage that to improve our performance. Um, looking at key trends, anywhere that we might be able to automate something that's manual, um, again, and then bolstering the information that we provide to our students to self-serve based on the topics that they are generating themselves when they reach out to us. So all of this information is collected into our repository and then delivered in a dashboard of, set of sorts so that you can then take and make those deductions from all of the information that's being collected. And then, of course, we really want to adapt on those experiences. So using things like sentiment analysis, which we'll show you during our demonstration, um, translation and transcription of the phone conversations to better understand our interactions. We can then leverage all of that information, play it back at a later date. If we want to review that information and see how we can improve, all of that, again, is just stored in a single repository. And then we can create really cool productivity tools and more targeted app experiences for both agents and managers as we see how they conduct their day to day, how they execute their jobs based on their preferences. So with that being said, I want to introduce you all to some of our personas that we're going to meet along the way during our live demonstration. So what we're going to see today is a flavor, a little bit of a little bit of all of the things that I mentioned earlier, and this is going to be a very condensed demonstration to leave some time for questions. But we have Anton, who's a university student who's navigating to a portal experience to look at his upcoming courses, um, see what action items he needs to do, and also just take a look at any open cases that he might have. He reaches out to a chatbot to receive some self-service help, and then he needs to escalate to an agent or a counselor. So that's where John the agent comes in to help Anton using some contextual information or potentially tapping another resource and initiating a consult to really resolve his case and his issue easily and efficiently. And then finally, we have Clara, the administrator, who wants to take a look at all of the analytics, the analysis, and identify some solutions to help John improve, help her organization improve, and then activate all of that information that's being stored in our solution. So from here, I'm going to navigate to our live environment. And what we're taking a look at is our student, or um, it could be a partner portal. But this is where Anton will navigate to to view his current courses, his assignments, his appointments or notifications. You'll see this is just one flavor of a portal experience, but you can tailor this to however you'd like. So Anton has the ability to create cases or review his upcoming cases. Um, in particular, again, he also has the ability to surface information that's typically stored in a database on an external facing site so that he can receive assistance or he can, um, you know, just have a level of um, autonomy over his course load, those cases that he has and be able to self serve. So you'll see here he has a list of cases um, and he has an issue with a, with his registration. So he's already tried to reach out to um, resolve this issue, but maybe he now needs to escalate by talking to a bot. So Anton's able to uh, initiate a chat. And this is where we are able to then engage with a customer service agent. And when we start to think about um, how we can minimize the amount of questions and amount of traffic that we might receive, this is where people start to think about leveraging a power virtual agent. So a power virtual agent um, allows you to easily create your own chatbots. So you'll see here I have a number of topics like create a case, drop a course, or transfer to an agent to escalate immediately. However, he can communicate with the Power Virtual Agent to um, retrieve records from the back end, get any updates that he might need to see about his current course load. However, in this case, he just wants to immediately transfer to an agent because he's feeling a little impatient and he just wants to resolve his issue as quickly as possible. 
But one thing to consider when we start to leverage these bot frameworks is that we can then get suggestions based on what people are inputting here to build more rich and personalized conversations using natural language understanding and extracting that information from, from our bot. And we can improve our chatbot's performance by using AI and more data-driven insights. So when we navigate to our backend experience, I've let, I've let Anton sit here for a little bit, but as a customer service uh, or a counselor who's resolving this issue, I have the ability to surface all of my interactions, incoming phone calls, which I'll show as well, or incoming text messages in a single pane of glass. So I have the ability to then accept this conversation from Anton and resolve and work to resolve his issue using a lot of the information that's already readily available within the solution here. So once this page loads, what we'll see is a historical record of all of my interactions with Anton, as well as his previous chat conversation. And a couple of things that I'm going to do here just really quickly and navigate back and forth. You'll have to excuse me wearing a number of different hats, but I'm going to use some negative words. So I'm angry with how long it took you to answer. If I go back to my omni-channel experience as my customer service agent, John, now, you can see that this chat sentiment analysis has changed to slightly negative because Anton indicated that he is not happy with my current performance. When we start to think about how we route these cases and how we route these issues that are incoming, that's where we start to think about unified routing and queues. So you have the ability to um, leverage your resources to their the best of their abilities by using either um, you know specific case types or their specific skill set to then route that information to them correctly. So. Um, John here is the best one, the best resource to help Anton. And what he's going to do is just take a look at um, all of the information that he has available to him. So he has this timeline record of all of the interactions with Anton to see that Anton has received assistance in the past. Um, and he's also already had conversations with someone else as well. But the cases he has outstanding are he needs help with dropping a course. He has issues with registration and the like. So as John works to navigate and resolve this issue, he has a number of different tools to, at, at the ready to assist him with making sure that he gets his process done as efficiently as possible. And he's able to generate quick replies. So you can curate quick replies based on, again, these most frequent topics and easily be able to enter and send those over to Anton to better assist him as he goes through this journey of the case resolution. Let's say, for example, John is having some is having a tough time um, and he can't really respond and he can't really, um, you know, adequately respond to Anton's question. He has the ability to initiate a consult with another resource if need be. However, I'm currently the only resource we're strapped for, we're strapped for resources apparently, but I'm currently the only resource here. Um, but he has the ability to initiate that consult with another individual if he needs to engage with someone else, a subject matter expert, and pull that person in. So you have the ability to search for that person um, based on the queue that they're in or just search for that agent directly. So let's say, for example, I'm actually fundamentally not the right resource to resolve this. I can transfer this to another queue so that the per correct person is then responsible for resolving this issue. So this would then be queued up for them um, and we would transfer the conversation to them if I'm not the correct resource. When we think about how we can add to this historical timeline and bolster up Anton's profile, give Anton, um, give our other agents more information, we have the ability to add to that historical timeline by creating a note. Anton has received assistance. And now this note will live on Anton's record in perpetuity, similarly to how all of the other chat conversations that he's had lives here now. So you're able to store all this information again in that single pane of glass. So when we again start to consider how can we again maintain a high level of excellence, um, we have surveying capability where you can send out surveys post chat and pre chat to make sure that Anton's needs were met as well as we have this concept of smart assist and similar case suggestions. So using AI technology, we can recommend articles that can then help Anton on his process um, and we can send those over to him immediately. So for example, if he needs to know how to perform maintenance on 3D printers, we can then copy this URL and simply paste it in the conversation and help to assist him. 
or we have the ability to search um, through a knowledge base repository um, in order to, again, better assist Anton on his journey here. So we can execute a knowledge search based on keywords and have that information populate as well. So you have a number of different ways that we are trying to give our agents the tools to respond accordingly. So let's say, for example, um, a phone call comes in to our omni-channel experience. What you're going to hear here is that same IVR that we saw in the portal, um, and it's going to indicate that we want to transfer to an agent. I love the elevator music. Sorry, I didn't understand. So what can I help you with today? Transfer to an agent. So we're going to get a little bit of feedback here when I pick up this phone call. So as I answer the phone call here, what you're going to start seeing is this live transcription of what I'm saying and the conversation that's being had with our, our agent. So on the left hand side, you can see that transcript. And all of this information will be recorded on the, the transcript here so that you can surface that at a later date. And of course, there's a little bit of a lag, but you can see that it's coming in now. But again, this is giving you that full 360 view of all the interactions that you might have with someone who's trying to engage with you. And if I simply want to see the, the conversation that was had, I have the ability to surface a record by looking at that same timeline feature. And from there, you are able to then play that information back or take a look at um, the, the chat transcript. So of course, on a live demo, this is not playing nice, but what, what you would hear and what you would see is a recording playback. So let me see if I can find the most recent one that we had. So I'm gonna actually surface our current conversation. And it's not available just yet, so it does take a little bit to generate. But again, what you would be able to see here is that conversation transcript that comes through and all of that information would be would be surfaced here. And I really want to show you all this, so that's why here we go. Let me know if you can hear the audio. I might have to reshare. So we don't need to listen to the entire conversation here, but you can see where you can play back the conversation that you previously had. And that's to give you a level of, um, you know, that 360 view again on um, how these conversations are going. If I need to produce more training material for my agents and their talk tracks, you can surface all of that information again from this um, from this one consolidated view. So you from here. To, you might have to share audio next time. Um, oh, you know what? Audio. We missed it, but yeah. we, could, we could see everything else. OK, let me. It's really cool. So I'm just going to see if I can reshare really quickly. All right, and I'm going to play it back. You might have pertaining to your courses, academic inquiries, and sorry, I didn't understand. So what can I help you with today? The choices are create transfer a case, an drop agent. a course, transfer to an agent. Transfer to an agent. Right, so you can hear that we record the transcript. You can then go and listen to that again if you need to, um, you know, as an administrator, as Clara, our administrator, she has the ability to go and review that information as well. And these are just a couple of the channels that we can re um, reach out to an agent on. We also have text capability. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end these conversations as well, and then I'm going to show you what the text capability looks like, and then we're going to start to talk about how we can leverage dashboarding and analytics um, to have that quality management component um, contained within the solution. So let's see here. So, so I'm, I'm going to go, go ahead. ahead. I want to go ahead and share my cell phone. Just going to get that queued up here. And what you're going to see is a very similar experience to what we saw before, where I saw an incoming conversation, whether it's Facebook, um, chat, or voice. And then from there, you're able to select what you talk, uh, select what you engage on. So if, for example, I rejected it, it would have gone to another resource. Um, however, I have the ability to accept a number of different conversations, and then they're all surfaced on the left hand navigation here if I want to engage in a number of different conversations. And of course, my phone is being very slow now. Gotta love and working on teams on a number of different devices. But while I wait for that to queue up, I think I'll navigate to the Omnichannel historical dashboard. And this is where our administrator experience will begin. So Clara has the ability to take a look at all of the analytics that we're ingesting. For example, um, how many incoming conversations we're engaged in, what channel we're mostly engaged in. So I can see that um, voice call is moderately preferred, but people typically will engage with the chat bot. So you can make those deductions and you're able to um, then, you know, do some training or maybe add some resources, let's say if you don't have enough capacity. And Clara has the ability to take a look at all of the topics that are incoming. So she has the ability to drill down into um, what topics are most frequent, as well as, again, take a look at all of those channel analytics. She also has the ability to monitor all of her agents. So there is a component of the agent dashboard where you're able to then take a look at um, which agents are responding to the most conversations, what channels are using, what the customer satisfaction score is, as well as what's the most common sentiment. So um, you can see here that I'm not a good agent and a lot of people don't like working with me and my sentiment is typically negative. So that means that there would be room for improvement here and that we might want to um, work with some more uh, resources in terms of training. In addition to that, you also have bot analytics. So in the same way that we want to monitor our agents, we also are able to monitor the bots capabilities and how the bot answers questions and see how many conversations they're engaged in. Um, and with that, you're able to then use those same types of analytics that we would have for our agents um, and use those analytics for our bots to make sure our bots are resolving issues as well. So our bots are not doing well either. And then finally, you have some more details on the topics that are happening. So if I wanted to do a search for um, the most frequent topics that we're seeing, um, we see that we have a number of uh, agents or a number of students that are transferring to agents. And I have the ability to drill down into these features to then see those details and then listen to the transcripts as well from this um, from this UI as well. So if I want to surface that area where I can then listen to the conversations that my system admin, aka me, is engaged in, I have the ability to do that too. So I can surface those conversations as well. So what I'm going to do is now quickly share my phone because it's decided to play nice. And that's just to give you a taste test. I won't go through everything just to leave some time for questions, not much time, but um, time. And what I'm going to do here is just show you what a uh, chat conversation or a text conversation would look like as it comes in. So what we're seeing here is my cell phone and on the back end experience, what's going to happen is that the bot is going to respond first and then what's going to happen is I could ex escalate to another individual as well if I needed to. So it's going to take a little bit because it has to reach out. There's flows that run in the back end, but in a couple of moments here, what's going to happen is that the virtual agent will respond and then I can engage in the same way I did um, on the portal using voice or using our chat bot um, using SMS. 
So that is essentially, again, that same experience in the back end. It comes up as a, a text message conversation instead of a voice call or a bot call or a bot interaction. But again, again, live, giving you the full flexibility of using any channel that you see fit. Um, and we really want to kind of drive drive home the, the business value impact of leveraging a solution like this because it really gives you, um, you know, the ability to answer key questions really quickly, um, understand and uncover hidden benefits, and then also provide more business value focus and drive those insights. So with that, I did not leave a lot of time for questions. I know I'm sorry, um, but let's uh, let's go ahead and I'll, I'll, I'll free up some of um, your cycles here and you guys can ask any questions that you might like or reach out to me um, if there's anything that you want to talk about individually. Um, OK, so I see one from Jason. Hey, greetings. Thank you. That's great. Um, really exciting to see that. Uh, I was wondering about integration with uh, other systems like EMR systems, like like Epic or Cerna, you know, in healthcare. Um, yeah, does... that's a that's a great question. Um, we do integrate with EMR, so there's actually a whole academic medical team within the team that I work with that focuses on um, how we can integrate with Cerna and EMR and get that data because it is uh, classified data. There are some uh, conditions on the integrations in the APIs, but that is something that we do. Yes. Right. Yeah, I would like to get your contact and follow up with you on that. Yeah, absolutely. And Heather can you know me, Heather? You can get it to me. Yes, I do. <laughs> I have more questions too, but I'll let that let them go till later. Um, and what we may need to do, if if uh, if it's okay, to kind of drop those questions in the thread. I know Brianna is so kind to have given us her time, but I believe she has a a hard stop here at five o'clock. So questions that you have, throw them in the channel. We'll get the we'll make sure. Sorry, in the chat, we'll make sure that Brianna gets those questions. She can see them. We'll aggregate those answers, and we'll we'll share those things back out with you. Um, we do have some folks scheduled for next week. I believe we are talking about some of our LMS integrations next week. So I know that's come up a lot. People have had questions about it. So uh, you'll get obviously the emails and the posts and all that good stuff about uh, next week's topic. But thank you, Brianna. We appreciate your time. Uh, I told Victoria in the background, I said she talks at a speed that works for me. Um, I'm I'm a huge fan of like the go, go, go. So thank you so much, Brianna. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. And we appreciate all of you for 